Okay, so you were born in the heart out of the Depression, really, right? 1920, Nin yeah, it's a little before the big biggie. Okay, you were born in 1920, okay. 33, so. Okay. Um, do you remember much about the Depression? I remember the dust storms of 1930 and 31, 32. We moved from Oklahoma City to Atchison, Kansas. Mm hmm. And live there then. And I remember this, the dust storms where well, you couldn't see from here across the room. They were so bad. But, yeah, I remember those. So the, tell me more about the dust storms. Well, it was a place uh, we, we weren't in. We lived in eastern Kansas, which was uh, considered kind of hilly compared to western Kansas. And there had been so much cultivation and all in the western Kansas fields that when those dust, the uh, wind came, just blue dust and dirt, really, clear across Kansas and in, up into Missouri. We lived on the Missouri River at Atchison, and they were starting to play out then, but they hadn't played out <laughs> by the time they got to us. What were some of um, the responsibilities that you had as a child growing up? And the main thing I remember about uh, responsibility, there's one instance. Uh, we lived on a little farm, and we had responsibility to take care of animals and all. And I had a uh, group of chickens, maybe 15 or 20 baby chicks, that had grown almost into fryer size. And uh, one night, the summers were warm, and one night my mother said, now hook the door on the chicken so the fox or anything can't get them, but be sure and open them up the next morning. And I guess uh, where I learned my biggest lesson about responsibility was I forgot to open the chicken coop the next morning and every one of them smothered for lack of oxygen. So I remember that as a responsibility lesson, no matter what it was. Wow. What, what were some of the things that you used to do for fun when you were a child? For? For, for fun. For, for fun? Yeah. Ride horseback. I had a friend that lived about a mile up the road from us in the country, and uh, we rode quite a bit when we could. The other times, uh, my dad and mother were great uh, croquet players, yeah, and softball players, yeah, and uh, we would play uh, every evening. We would play uh, uh, softball. Yeah. And uh, every, uh, well, I guess every Sunday afternoon, Saturday afternoon, uh, we played uh, croquet. Yeah. Familiar with croquet? Oh, yeah. That was an old timer. And uh, that was a big, that was the most fun time we had. And always we went down to Heineken's ice cream place after, in the evening after we played games. Mm -hmm. And that uh, was a high time because you got a double dip ice cream cone for a nickel. And my dad was a great ice cream eater. What was Oklahoma City like? I, the only thing I remember about Oklahoma City was, uh, and when I was a youngster, just a baby, was mainly just the caretaking and the stories and the pictures. Uh -huh. As I grew older, older became more important to me. Um, I, we lived in Britton, Oklahoma, which is a suburb of Oklahoma City, which is now part of Oklahoma City. But uh, the oil wells hit that boom area right in there, and the capital grounds were covered with uh, oil wells and oil. And uh, I guess the most important thing I remember from Oklahoma City was the, the friendship we had, my mother and father had with another mother and father, and they had two twin children, a girl and a boy, and we were real close as, uh, in our teens. But that's about all I remember about Oklahoma City. Um, what activity would you say brought you the most joy as, as a child, besides horseback riding? Uh, the most enjoyable activity was, uh, well, really it was working. Yeah. Uh, out on the farm. Mm -hmm. I drove teams and uh, that was the most enjoyable activity outside of our, our softball and croquet games. Tell me, tell me about the work. What kind of work were you doing? We were on the farm. My father 
uh, and mother operated a mental sanitarium in Atchison, Kansas. And because of some litigation rules and all, my, my uncle Higgins, Clarence Higgins, in uh, Long Beach, California, was a very wealthy man. And he traded different objects all over the United States. And he traded, a, he owned the Hershey Hotel in, in Long Beach, California. And he traded it for a, uh, or took, took in on the trade for it, a sanitarium, which was a mental institution before all of our fancy institutions we have today. And he uh, uh, needed someone to operate the sanitarium. Mm -hmm. My mother was a nurse. You go back to the hospital days. And so he sent them to Atchison, Kansas. And that was uh, the big remembrance there. But the memories out of that make you grow up fast because they weren't like today. I've seen parents take choice over one child over another and put them in a mental institution and keep the other at home. I've seen things that just, for a 13 or 14 year old, pretty hard to take. Yeah. Uh, parents would make a decision between a, one child and another and it uh, didn't seem to affect the parents, but it affected me and I re always remember that and that goes back to that responsibility. <laughs> yeah. Um, at what age did you start dating? Pardon? At what age did you start dating, going out with girls and stuff well, like that? I don't that? even remember that far back. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I guess about uh, 15. 15? Yeah. Maybe 14 because uh, then you could drive at 14. Really? And uh, beyond that we didn't do much because there wasn't any way to get around. Tell me about your first car. My first car was a catastrophe. It was one of the, supposedly the best automobile built for that time. Uh, it was a 28 Chevrolet. And uh, Dad got me that. It was used, but he got that for me. And, and it, was, it was lots of fun, but it was a catastrophe as far as a motor. <laughs> but that, that was the first one. Uh. Tell me some more about the actual vehicle. Uh, a 28, that was a pretty early model That's car, huh? Pretty early model. It was, well, this one happened to be a four-door, and it was kind of a gray, green, I don't know what color you call it. That's when you painted them whatever you wanted to with a paintbrush. You didn't have all this lacquer and that, <laughs> that type of thing. And uh, you didn't go out uh, too far in them. Uh, one trip I took to Oklahoma City for a weekend, I like never got back. <laughs> didn't have any money, <laughs> and didn't have any gas, didn't have a thing that would run. So we parked it uh, up around the Oklahoma border, Oklahoma Kansas border, and uh, I talked to a fellow into taking a check. He knew what was wrong, fixed it. I said, I don't have any money in the bank, but would you take a check if I just give it to you and be sure the money got in the bank when it came? And he did. He, you couldn't do that nowadays. Yeah. But he, uh, he gave, uh, got it running, and we got home. <laughs> wow. Yeah, things have changed quite a bit. You, could, you, can't, you can't do that anymore. That's another one of those responsibility items. I had a responsibility to that man to be sure there was money. And, of course, my only source then was Dad's. <laughs> and he didn't have a lot. <laughs> but that's the way it was paid. <clears throat> what year... Um, did you meet your wife? Well, that's an interesting story. <laughs> we were married in June 1943. We were both going to Emporia State, Kansas Emporia State Teachers College. And I remember one night uh, or evening, there was this young lady with a nice fur collar on walking in front of me about 40 or 50 feet. And I'd never seen her before. We'd been to school for six months. And uh, I just kind of kept my eye on her. That was it. A few days later, she went to. The, she lived next door in a pastor's house to the Baptist church there in uh, in uh, Emporia, and uh, she was sitting down in one of the pews, not very far. And a friend of mine, Roger Beatty, uh, went to church with me that night, and I uh, we we saw him, and, and he reached over and said, uh, "I bet you a dime you won't." try to get a date with that girl. He saw me watching her, <laughs> you know. 
And uh, well, I said, I'll take that. A dime was a lot of money. <laughs> so uh, as we went out the door, uh, I followed her and uh, asked her if I could take her to get an ice cream cone. I introduced myself to her. And she says, and before you go home, and she says, well, yeah, but I just live next door. <laughs> I said, well, we'll go get an ice cream cone anyway. So I met her on uh, uh, that evening after church on a nickel bet, on a dime bet for two nickel ice cream cones. And then uh, uh, two months, two weeks, and two days later, we were married. Wow. You said that she was wearing a fur collar? A little fur jacket, I don't know, maybe a rabbit, I don't know, <laughs> but it was, it was a little fur collar. Tell me some more about the way that she looked, do you remember? Remember what? About the way that she looked. Oh, well, uh, when you look at Holly, you probably know how I feel when I look at Kay. <laughs> uh, but uh, she was tall and thin, and, and uh, I think very beautiful, I think she still is. So you were married shortly after you met her, just a couple months, right? Two months, two weeks, and two days. Wow. That's quick. And uh, and the year was 1941? 43. 43. Okay. 43. Um, did you, were you involved in the service at all? Uh, when I graduated, which was coming up right there, within two months, uh, I was... Uh, interviewed for the Coast Guard in New Jersey, but my physical wouldn't let me go there. And I had an, a had an application in with uh, Eastman Kodak. My chemistry professor said, why don't you send this application to Kodak in Rochester, New York? And I sent, uh, I sent it in, and I got an immediate reply back that they offered me a job, they hadn't even talked to me. And they knew my record, but they, uh, said that we offer you this job and can you come but you be here by uh, approximately June the 1st as close as you can. And it wasn't for Rochester service, it was for Eastman Kodak service in uh, Oak Ridge, Tennessee where the atomic bomb was being made mm -hmm. and that's uh, how I entered. I did not have service record. And how long did you work for them? I worked for them 43 years. Wow. And uh, I was uh, work, started work for Rochester for six months, a beautiful summer, and then at Oak Ridge until the bomb was dropped in August of 1945. I worked on the bomb part of it. And then I went back to Kingsport, Tennessee, which was Eastman Chemical Company, and was there a couple years, and then transferred down here to the new plant in Longview, and worked here for, since 1951, until 86. What was it like working there before the bomb was dropped? No one really knew more than what the area uh, in which they were working. It was that secret. And I say no one, somebody had to. Uh, I don't know who the biggie was, but the guy that invented it, the German came over and invented it. Uh, everything was done in secrecy. I was put on a, as a member of the Acme Credit Company to report anything once a month, anything that looked suspicious. And uh, uh, wait, men were acting, or women were acting, or anything just like. So that uh, it was a, a most fortunate thing for K and I to be there as far as personal safety. Mm -hmm. But it was, again, a big responsibility as to what was going to happen that no one knew. Yeah, and uh, people. There were people. Uh and other places also working on the bomb yeah, too. Up in, up in Washington and uh, some work still being done at Rochester, New York. Uh -huh. uh, that was the main part though. And let's see, there was another one or two that were smaller units. There were mm -hmm. three, three or four companies in Oak Ridge, Eastman Kodak and Carbide Chemical and uh, uh, well I can't think of the other company, but there's two or three smaller companies. What was life like as newlyweds? Well, we were fortunate and we could be together. Mm -hmm. And we ha had our first uh, days of marriage in Rochester, New York. And uh, we were lucky enough to find a small apartment in a private home, two elderly ladies. If we would, she gave us a certain rate of rent if I'd take care of the furnace day and night. 
So that kept us kind of moving. But we were able, we were on Lake Ontario. We were to take some scur excursions, and when we come back in on one stormy night, I remember, uh, gee, we don't have to tell anybody we're coming in. It's kind of an unusual feeling. You know, we didn't check in with anybody. <laughs> you were on your own. And then the Genesee Park was on is on the uh, Genesee River, and we used to spend lots of time there. And people during that time were very, very friendly and helpful. You go out on the curb uh, waiting for a bus, and somebody in an automobile happened to have one would come wheeling up and ask, "Can we take you somewhere?" And of course, on Sundays we always went to church, and that's about the only time we were out. So we had to ride the church, and uh, it was a, a very beautiful time. We spent many times in the park just together, and that was what we had hoped for. And uh, the Lord took care of that, kept us together. And how many, how many kids did you have? I mean, children? Children. Uh, Don, uh, which you know, is the oldest, and Bonnie Catherine, which is the middle, and she lives next door to us, Bonnie Catherine Davis now. And then Gary Hawk, who lives in, uh, with his family in Nashville, Tennessee. That's the size of our family, outside of a lot of children, yeah. grandchildren. <laughs> that's, a, that's, that's a big household, though. Yes, yes. So the children came along, and uh, you guys were still fairly young. Yes. Fairly young. Um, how did things change when, when the house got so full of little kids? Well, we never had a big house, so it got full yeah. quick. <laughs> <laughs> the first house uh, we had was in Kingsport, and... Uh, Kingsport, Tennessee, and it was a little two-bedroom. We bought for eight thousand dollars on credit, hundred percent credit. <laughs> but we had it; and it was fine. We... <clears throat> what were the, what were the kids like? Oh, our uh, older well, all three of the children have been nothing but blessings all the way through. We've never had any trouble that you wouldn't expect out of a one, two, or three or four-year-old. Uh, they've been very, very fine folks, and they've, uh, we've been close, I think. Uh, mm -hmm. Don, and he married a wonderful girl, Judy, and then uh, Todd married uh, Bonnie Kay, and he's a wonderful man, good Christian man, and Gary married Brenda uh, at the same time, and she's a wonderful go-getter. You just can't keep her sitting down. <laughs> she just goes. <laughs> But they've been very wonderful, and our grandkids are just as equally as fine. They married well, and you know, you know Brian, of course. Mm -hmm. Has the church played a big role in your life? Church has played a very big role. Uh, well, my mother was a very devout Christian. My father was a Christian, but looks like. Uh, the message is here. <laughs> uh, she was. A, my mother was a very strong Christian, and uh -huh. uh, my father was a Christian. My mother worked with small children in the church uh, there, and I guess uh, the only time I realized how important it really was was uh, when I got away to school at uh, at uh, Emporia State Teachers College. There weren't too many real devoted young people then that took the time to say, hey, this I need. But there was one young man by the name of Edward. He was older than the rest of us. He's probably 24, 25. Most of us were 18, 19. And he took an outstanding lead of, uh, of uh, young people and would take us out to the lakes on nights and after church and special things like that. But then uh, it got a, became a time when we go to church at night, on Sunday nights particularly, uh, there weren't too many there and uh, the devotion that was given to those that were there meant a lot to me. And that's the reason I think Kay meant a lot to me because she was not a Baptist, she was a member of the Friends Church and it's different backgrounds but at the same time she was very structured in her religion. And uh, the church has meant a lot to me all the way through. I've been on several committees and helped start several missions, and and I don't want any credit for that. I just, in my own heart, know that the church has meant a lot to me. That's fantastic. Um, is there anything else before we move on to Kay that you can think of? 
the only thing I would say uh, to add to what I just said was that uh, uh, a faith in the Lord Jesus Christ is, is something that's carried me through. I'm thankful for that. Well, fantastic. Let's let's bring your wife out and talk to her a little bit. Can I get out of this horse? <laughs> Where were you born? In uh, Kansas City, Missouri. Kansas City, Missouri. What year? 1923. 1923. Um, do you remember anything about your grandparents? Um, my, let's see, my father's mother uh, lived till, oh, I guess I was married and had a child, and I saw her occasionally. Um, her former husband I saw a couple of times only. Um, my mother's mother passed away just a few months before I was born, but her father even lived with us for a while. Mm -hmm. And what were they like? Um, well, my grandmother was one of those persons she'd come and we would look forward to it. By the time she left, we were glad she left. <laughs> <laughs> she uh, didn't get along with people very well. But my grandfather was just a nice old man for all I remember. Yeah. Old-fashioned, real old-fashioned couple? Uh, well, I mean, they were opposite sides of the family. Uh, my grandfather was a primitive Baptist, which I felt was real interesting because I didn't know that any churches didn't have piano music. They just sang a cappella and they didn't believe in missions and things that I'd heard of, which is very different than mm -hmm. today. And did you grow up in Kansas City? No, I was a well in second grade, seven, wasn't quite eight, uh, when we moved to a farm west of Olathe, Kansas. It was just after the Depression and my father had been in construction and was out of work. And so his, his uncle had a farm that we moved to. And that was the reason we moved there. Do you remember much about the Depression? Um, not really. I mean, I knew that there wasn't a lot of money, but nobody had much money. So I was never really aware that we were poor, but yet as I look back, I know we were quite poor. Yeah. But everyone around us was the same way, so wasn't so much, but living on a farm we had plenty of food, and we're warm, comfortable. What they had to work hard. But What kind of farm? Uh, well, he started out just farming, but he turned it into a dairy farm, and he and mother milked cows for a number of years and sent it to a dairy in Kansas City. And uh, what sort of responsibilities did you have on the farm? Well, usually I got to do the kitchen duty or clean the house. I never learned to milk. I didn't do things around the barn and all. Mm -hmm. But I would try to have dinner ready when they'd come in after Mother had gotten it started. And of course, house cleaning and stuff like that. Did you have brothers and sisters? I had two younger brothers. Oh. Uh, I was the oldest child in the family. Uh, one brother is... Uh, what? four years younger and the other was six years younger. So you had to take care of them. Yes, got to help some on that. <laughs> Don't remember a whole lot about that, but I know I remember pulling the younger brother out of the tank, water tank when he fell in at one time, but I don't remember much about it. And <laughs> let's see, can, so Kansas City was the closest big town or? Well, the big town, yes. Olathe was where we would go shopping and all. It was eight miles away. Oh, and how often did you go into town? Well, probably once a week. Once uh, a week? Depending on the weather. When it was real bad, we didn't go that often. <laughs> but just to get staples. Uh, Mother just sold eggs from mm -hmm. her chickens. And and your father was able to, to make a living out there on that farm? Yes. In fact, they did quite well, I guess, with the dairy, but selling milk. Because mm -hmm. it uh, didn't seem, at least it didn't seem to me hard. I'm sure it was to them. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's not, it's not an easy living. 
Not at all. What did you do for fun? Well, I've always read a lot. And uh, as a child, I remember making paper dolls using the catalog and that sort of thing. And uh, then I always had my dolls. There were some Christmases that I would get a new doll, but Mother would always make new clothes for my, for my dolls, and I played with dolls a lot. Uh, of course, around on the farm, there was, it was fun to jump in the hay and things like that. <laughs> Be around animals and all. Did you uh, did you go into town to go to school? Not at first. Not at first? I went to country school, which was a mile and a half away, mm -hmm. which I got to walk back and forth. And uh, I remember my first day particularly because I had to cross two bridges. And my mother was always afraid of water, so she kind of had me afraid of bridges because of it. And I, she knew I was afraid to walk across those bridges. Well, once I walked across them, it wasn't wasn't any big deal, but and it was pretty rough to walk to school in the snow and all that. But I, um, let's see, I went to the country school till I was in the, that was second grade, the end of second grade, till I was in the eighth grade in that year. There were so few of us, there were only four or five, that they um, made arrangements for us to move, to be taken by car to DeSoto, which was about seven miles in a different direction than Olathe. And I went to school there for, I guess it was seventh, sixth and seventh grade, I guess it was. Then for eighth grade, they had enough that they went back to the country school. And in the pictures of the school, I looked like I was a teacher because they were all so much younger than I. <laughs> and then when I started the high school, um, let me see, until I drove, I went, well, let me see, one year I lived in town with a family during the week, and Daddy would come get me the weekends. And then the next year I rode with a neighbor boy who uh, uh, drove, and then the last I learned to drive and would drive in. In Dolaitha to school. And, <clears throat> excuse me, how old were you when you started driving? Fourteen. Fourteen. It was legal age then. <laughs> Like well, that. movies. Movies. Uh, went to Kansas City uh, after prom and a few things like that. Yeah, I danced, but for a long time just danced with girlfriends. But later, of course, went to other dances. Tell me about um, when you met your husband. Well, I was in college then. Went to Kansas State Teachers College at Emporia, and uh, at the end. Let me see, I guess it was around the second semester, my sophomore year. I was living, that year I was living in a house on campus where um, about a dozen girls live on our honor. We had no house mother. And, uh, but when they, the war became so intense, they brought many Texans up there to train at that college. And so they asked people out in the city to take we girls, ones in the dormitory and also in my house, into their homes so that the soldiers could live in the dorms and in the house. And uh, one of my girlfriends uh, was a close friend of the Baptist minister there. So she and another girl moved into the Baptist parsonage. And um, they had gone out this Sunday evening and I thought, well, I'll go to church next door. It's just no problem on doing that. And that night, Benny saw me and his, his college roommate bet him a dime that he wouldn't take me home. Well, when he introduced himself and I said, well, I'd be glad for you to walk me home, but it's just next door. <laughs> of course, he gulped and said, well, let's go get some ice cream first. So that started it. At that time, I was studying to be a teacher. Uh -huh. And uh, during the war years, you could go two years and get a teaching certificate. Mm -hmm. and that's what I got. And, and then did you start teaching? Well, I had a school to teach, but uh, I got a proposal and got married instead. Oh. T tell me about uh, what life was like as a newlywed. Well, uh, we went by train to Rochester, New York, York where we first lived. And uh, we found an apartment about a block from Benny's work because we had no car. And of course, during those years, it was very hard to get one because they quit making new ones during that time. So unless you found a used one, 
You just couldn't get a car. Of course, we didn't have the money for it anyway. Uh, as I remember, the first month was the hardest month because we had borrowed money to get there and had borrowed money to for some groceries, but it sure was rough until he got that first paycheck, which is always true when you move, I think. There's always so many unexpected things, but uh, we uh, had a had three rooms, uh, bedroom, kitchen, and living room, and then we shared the bath with the family that lives in the house. We had the downstairs and they lived upstairs. And it worked out pretty good. They were real thoughtful to stay out so Benny could get ready for work. And of course, since I was there all day. Uh, first few weeks, I was so tired from college and everything else, I slept a lot. And then many times he'd come home for lunch to wake me up. <laughs> but um, they, they were real nice times. We would get tickets to ride on the bus, weekly tickets like people did that uh, travel regularly and go to all the different parks in town and most places in Rochester, it's an interesting city, uh, you could walk to a park. So there were many different parks and they had special things that oh, that were special, that were interesting to see, and we would do that. And that was one of our big recreation times. Then, oh, we rented bicycles one Sunday, and we went on a moonlight boat ride out on Lake Ontario. And well, that sounds like a really nice time. June till the latter part of October when he was moved to Oak Ridge. Uh-huh. And it was... Kind of honeymoon days, I guess. Yeah, it's a good it's a good place to be a newlywed. Sounds like. Uh, then he had many friends who were single friends that we'd have over for lunch or for dinner, lots of times. And uh, that was sort of the, we occasionally would go to a movie, but not often because it took money. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. What activity would you say brought you the most joy? Um, and, and this doesn't have to be just when you're newlyweds. I'm talking about in your whole life. What do you think your your, your favorite activity has been? Is it reading, you think? or Oh, you mean as a hobby for myself? Yeah, just a hobby. Well, I read a lot. I sew quite a lot. Uh-huh. And uh, we've traveled quite a little bit in the United States. We haven't gone out of the country much, but uh, probably those things most of all. What's uh, what's the, your favorite place that you've been to, that you've traveled to, you think? Well, one of the most recent was one of the most exciting for our 60th wedding anniversary. Our uh, children, our three children and their spouses took us to Alaska. We flew up and then cruised back to Vancouver. And I'd say that was the most exciting. I had never been on a cruise before and it was really a wonderful trip. And that was just a couple months ago, right? Yes, it was in June. Now, prior to that, I'd say the trip to Hawaii was outstanding. There were 13 of us in the family went, and Don, Brian's father, was acted as our tour guide and arranged for, well, we had to have two cars every time we went anyplace because there were 13 of us, and we had a great time. Well, when there's that many people, there has to be somebody in charge to make yeah. sure everything goes right. He took care of it real good. We just had a wonderful time. Tell me about when he was born. Well, we lived in Oak Ridge then. Uh -huh. And uh, we lived across the street from the hospital, so it was no problem getting to the hospital. And Benny's mother, who was a nurse, mm -hmm. came to be with me. And it seems like that uh, with all three of our children, they give me a due date, and six weeks later I have one. <laughs> a baby. And nowadays they don't let you go over they, what they think will be, but that's the way it's been. But she stayed and stayed, and she kept thinking, well, isn't she going to go? But she, being a nurse, she got extra duty working nights at the hospital because she knew that I, when I came in, she could get to me. And uh, it was real exciting to get our son. Uh, it, uh, it was yeah, it's very exciting. Um, what was he like as a, as a child? Well, of course, he cried quite a little bit. You know, the, any child, or particularly the first child, has to train the parents. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and the, what was wrong, the learning all of that. But uh, he was really a pretty good baby, even though he did cry some, some for quite some time at first. And, all. and then you had 
you had uh, two more? No? Yes. Bonnie and Gary both were born in Kingsport. That's after we moved up there. Don was uh, around three. Well, let me see. I said, what is their difference in there? Four years. He was almost four, I guess, when we moved up there. And uh, But both of them were born in Kingsport. So you had a, a quite a house full really quick. Well, Don, Don was four when we had right. Bonnie, and then Gary was two years later. And uh, that uh, was our family. Yeah. Um, has, has the church played an important role in your life, yes. you think? Uh, I've always got, mother always took us to church. And of course, Benny's family always had gone to church, so we've always been in church, and he is a deacon in the church. And we've, I've worked as a preschool director and directed the weekday school. I taught almost any age at different times. And right now I work a lot in the media center. Mm -hmm. And I particularly do a lot of the memorials. Mm -hmm. People want to leave a memorial, they either give us a check or select one of the books that we uh, do. And like this morning, I did four memorials this morning. Uh, really? Because we've had two or three deaths this week. And w when did you start doing that? Uh, I've been doing this, oh, I don't know, several years now. Several I years. Remember. But I like working in the library. Of course, I want to read all the books that are there, but I can't. <laughs> yeah, no. I lo love working in the library. I've worked particularly hard on, in the fiction, we get so much Christian literature now that's in series, mm -hmm. and we'd have so many people come in and say, are there any more in the series? Well, nobody knew because it's hard to know all of the books. So I've gone through all of our adult fiction and marked the series mm -hmm. and then have a book so they can look up to find out if there are other books that they can read in that series. And if we do not have a book and there is one out, we know to buy that one then. So mm -hmm. that's another project that I've had in, in our media center. We're now working to get everything on computer. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's a job because we, even though we have barcodes on some of the books, some of the barcodes don't work, so it's hard to get it all worked out. Yeah. Um, do you have any uh, secrets or uh, beauty, beauty tips that you could give to the, to the young women, ways to stay healthy and happy? Well, it's good to get exercise regularly, and we do walk at the mall six days a week. Yeah. Uh, for a long time I went to Figure World and did water aerobics, but they closed and I keep thinking I'll go to another one, but I haven't because I do like to swim. I'm not a good swimmer, but up until, well, up until we moved here, we had a swimming pool all the time we've been in Longview until I swam quite a bit then. But um, as far as makeup is concerned, I have used Mary Kay since they were the company was a year old, which I think is getting close to 40 years. So it's a good set of makeup for keep. I mean, for the for the face. And I do think that it's good to have a balanced diet. And all. I can't say I'll do it all the time, but. <laughs> and it and it helps to have a good marriage. And it, oh yes, we've had know. a good life together, and we do have a good marriage. We've if you find if you find that special somebody, it it, it uh, takes the pressure off. I think. Yes, but you still have to work at it. You know. Yeah. This is one of the things that I think many people don't realize that just because you got married and you were love at that time doesn't mean it's going to last unless you work at it. And you've got to work at it to keep the other one in mind. And in other words, you need to each do ninety percent of the leaning that forward so you cross paths. But it is is a great life when you can work together with someone that you love. Uh, what are some What are some of the things that you think um, are important to having a good marriage? Well, being willing to give up sometimes. <laughs> you can't win every argument all the time if there's argument or disagreements. We've never argued. I don't think uh, the way I understand arguing, we've never argued. We've disagreed, which is healthy, I think. Mm -hmm. And what was the rest of the question? <laughs> well, uh, what what are some of the secrets? What are some of the the um, some advice to the young people on how to have such a good marriage? 
Well, I think I think being willing to uh, to have your opinion considered, but not always right, mm -hmm. is uh, I, I just don't think ever, uh, any person can be right all the time. So maybe it could be you that were wrong, and uh, that's I think been our philosophy of sharing, and uh, it, it uh, it's been easy with Kay. She, she's uh, a wonderful person to agree with. She thinks things out. I'm a little more impulsive in some respects, but she thinks things out. <laughs> um, do you have any advice to the to the grandchildren and the children? Uh, little bits of wisdom that you picked up along the way that has made your life easier? I have nothing to add to what their lives have shown. Uh, they uh, very patiently listen to anything I suggest, but then most of the time they do what they want, what they feels right, what they should do, which is what I like. I like about that. But they at least say, uh, hey, what do you think? <laughs> well, I, I think uh, uh, one of the most important things is to remember if you're having a good day financially and so forth, that there may be a day when that's not going to be. But most of this generation and our children's generation uh, think this will go on forever. I hope it does. But those of us have seen uh, the little more desolate days with no food and uh, no clothes particularly and no automobiles particularly and had to depend on each other. Uh, uh, I hope they all remember that and I think they do from what we've said. In fact, I can give a little illustration. Uh, when, uh, before I left home to go to school, my dad gave me a $2 bill, and he says, if you never spend that, you'll always have money. And uh, we never spent it for, what, three months after we were married. <laughs> but there was a time when we didn't have any money. We were... 1,500 miles away from our home, and we didn't ask our parents for anything. And in fact, they didn't have it. Uh, so one day, there was something special both of us wanted, and it wasn't a material thing. But I took the last $2 out of my pocket and uh, came back and surprised Kay with whatever it was. So I've always remembered that, and to this day, I've, well, for 60 years, I've carried a $2 bill in my pocket. And I wanted to share that with you to always. If you don't spend it, you'll always have $2. <laughs> That's just one of my secrets. <laughs> he also gets $2 bills to give the kids at Christmas. Oh. Plus silver dollars. Mm -hmm. He has a lot of fun with his monies for them. <laughs> now one of the things that we enjoy a lot is we walk the mall each morning and then we go to Burger King for breakfast. <laughs> sit down and talk. And the... <clears throat> Some of the clerk, there's three of the girls that work there that we know quite well. And one time they asked, what do you find to talk about? Well, we just have a lot of talk about, I guess. Of course, I don't have any problem with that. I can look at her. She's pretty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you got nothing to talk about, you can just not say anything and just keep staring at her. Well, that's hard sometimes. <laughs> I guess uh, Kay mentioned uh, exchange students. We've had 14 exchange students from all over the Eastern Europe and uh, they have been a real joy to, to both of us uh, or have to me in particular and because it gave me an, an outlet. Uh, if you go to take them to soccer games and that type of thing and I'm always sitting in the back and they say, hey dad, come on up here and that meant a little bit something. <laughs> kind of personal. I don't think we have ever, I don't think we've ever gone to bed angry. In fact, I don't think we have in the daytime. We disagree, but that's, if you don't do that, you're not healthy. <laughs> but we've never gone to, away from each other angry, I don't, to my knowledge. We love all of you very, very much. And you're such a joy in our life that we can't do anything but thank you for the joy that you bring to us and nothing is any nicer than when we're all can be together and do things together. And we pray that you'll pass this on to your children, the love that you have for other people and for those around you. We are thankful for all of you. 
We're thankful for the things that you do for us. Uh, we're thankful for your children, your great grandchildren to us, and particularly for those that uh, we just see once in a while. We're thankful for you. God bless.